Welcome back to the channel. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna be looking at cloth simulation. We're just gonna be making a super simple simulation here. It's just gonna be a bowl with a piece of cloth that just folds on it. So if you're a beginner in Blender and you wanna kind of approach cloth simulation, just kind of learn the basics, this is a fantastic tutorial. It's not gonna get technical. It's not gonna cover every little detail. It's just to kind of get you out there and just make something that you can you know, render out and have some fun with, show to your friends and family. And if you wanna go further, you can check out some of my more advanced cloth simulation for like characters and clothing. But I think this is a fantastic intro. This is what we're gonna be making. Um, we'll add some, like I said, a few materials, a bit of lighting. I'll even show you how to render it out as a video if you want. But um, yeah, let's jump in and have some fun. Jumping into a new scene in Blender, go ahead and select your default cube. Now, instead of getting rid of this and turning it and replacing it with a sphere, we're gonna turn it into a sphere. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna tab into edit mode by hitting the tab key on the keyboard. With everything selected, you can right click and go subdivide. And then under your subdivide tab, give it something like 15 subdivisions and then drop this down. And with everything active, you can simply go Shift, Alt, and S. So Shift, Alt, S. You can see this little cursor comes up here with the black arrows, and you can just move your mouse afterwards. You can just let go of the keyboard, and now you have this move. You can just move it until it's round, and then click. Tab back out, right click, and go Shade Smooth. I thought I'd just do it that way so you can learn that extra thing there. Now we have this sphere. By the way, make sure to right click, just go Shade Smooth if you haven't already. We're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna go to our Mesh Options and add in a plane. And we're gonna go G, Z and move this plane up so it sits above our sphere. Now, what we can do here is we can grab our plane and we can go S to scale that plane up and make it bigger and then click. Once you scale an object that you can add physics to, it's super important to go Control A or Command A and apply that scale. Very important as Blender looks at the size. We're also gonna select our sphere. We'll go S and scale that one down a bit and click and then go Control A and also apply that scale. Now we have our elements in place. You can see we have a camera here. If you press zero on your number pad, you can go to the camera view and click on your camera and it's now active. And in your camera view, you can press G and then move your mouse to move the camera and then click. And you can also press G and then click the middle mouse button once, move your mouse and zoom in and out. So I'm gonna to move to about here. Nice. Okay, we can always adjust it later, but for now, let's grab our plane. Let's go over to our physics and let's give it a cloth. We'll get back to the cloth settings in a little bit, but so our cloth can actually interact with the ball. We just need to simply select the ball and then over under our physics tab, come here and give it a collision. Now our cloth, which we'll click on again, will now know to interact with this. So just by default, this will work now. So if you come here to your timeline, drag this up, make sure you're on frame one. If you now hit the space bar, you're gonna see a simulation. But the problem is here, not necessarily our cloth settings here, which we will refine, but the fact that there's not enough topology. So if you actually tab into edit mode by pressing tab, you can see this is only made out of four points. So we need to subdivide it and that's really simple. Just press A to select everything, right click and click on subdivide. And let's come to the subdivide tab and let's give it something like 35. That's a good number. So now if we go back into object mode and we come to frame one, which is important, we can hit the space bar and now it has some points that it can deform with the simulation. The only issue is we can see that this cloth is going through itself. There's actual bits of mesh going through itself. And that's by, and that's because by default, Blender, if we come over here to our physics and under the cloth, if you go to the collisions, under the collisions tab, Blender turns off by default this thing called self collision because it does use more of your processor. So if you enable that self collision, now if you go to frame one and you hit the space bar, it will also interact with the ball and with itself. How cool is that? You can also right click and go shade smooth, but we're still seeing here that it looks a little bit jaggedy. So there are two things you can do. Number one is you can go to frame one, tab back in here, and you can always come in here and with everything active, right click and subdivide again, which is what I'm gonna do. And I'm only gonna subdivide it once this time. And you can tab back out. And then if you go to frame one, you hit the space bar 
it's gonna be a lot slower, but you're gonna have a nice result here. However, you're still gonna see this jaggedy stuff here. So another thing you can do on top of that is you can go to your modifiers. You can go add modifier. You can click on search and type in sub, and you can give it a subdivision surface that now sits underneath this cloth. And now it's smoothed that out a lot. How cool is that? I'm gonna go back to frame one. I'm gonna just go ahead and scale my cloth up even bigger and click. I'm gonna go control A and I'm gonna apply that scale. So now I'm gonna hit the space bar starting at frame one. And I think that is looking really, really nice. That's about it. If you go back to your physics, the rest of the things here just kind of deal with the stiffness. So for example, if you increase this bending, it'll become more like cardboard or lever, it'll be stiffer. So I'm not gonna mess with that. And if you also go down, things like pressure is if you wanna make like a pillow, you can create like an inside pressure between two pieces of cloth. That's something we'll cover on another time, but um, the main thing we wanna look at here is the cache. And at the moment, it's just running every time. But if we actually come here to the simulation, we can make the cache whatever we want. So in this case, we have one to 250 frames in our timeline here. But the cache is also set to the same by default. But I only want this to go to 150. That's how long I want it to be. So I'm gonna go and make it 150. And I'm gonna make my end frame here 150 as well. And then if you come here, you can click on bake and it'll now bake this into your blend file, okay? So if you make any changes, it won't do anything. You'll have to delete the bake and then come back. The upside is now if we like go in and out of Blender, we're not gonna have to re-let this run every time from scratch, which is slow. So it'll just gonna bake it in to our scene. It is now done baking. So if I go to frame one and I hit the space bar, you can see even if I tab in and out of edit mode, it doesn't ruin anything. We've got a nice cloth simulation. So there you have it. That is a very simple cloth simulation. Let's make this look cool. So we're gonna go into our camera view by pressing one on our number pad, or zero, I was meant to say zero. And let's grab a camera, and you can position it however you want, but I'm gonna kind of go with maybe looking a little bit more from the top. You go ahead, place it however you want. Once you have that done, you can go Shift A, you can go to your light options, add in an area light but we'll probably go to our render settings first and change it from EV to cycles. And then we're gonna come down to our render and set our max samples to 45. And denoising should be enabled by default. This is light active, we're just gonna go G and move it up and click. I have my transform pivot set to 3D cursor. So if I now go to my light properties, I can give it a strength of 140. I can increase the size to two meters. And I can now go Z and go rendered. And with my light set selected, I can double tap R and rotate around the cursor. So I'm gonna go and rotate it here. Then I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate and duplicate it to have another one kind of coming off from the side and click. And Shift D to duplicate and have another one kind of coming from the back, like so, for now. And I'm gonna select my cloth. I'm gonna go over to my modifiers. I'm gonna go add modifier search and also add a solidify, which is optional, but it now adds a little bit a thickness to this cloth. You can see the before and after, okay? And now let's go to our materials tab. Let's click new. Now let's call this just shiny. You can call it whatever you want. And what we'll do is we'll come here to our base color, click on it, and you can make this whatever you want. So I might go with like a blue. I'm gonna make it metallic and bring down the roughness a bit. So now if we go Z and we go rendered, this is what we have, pretty cool. And now by grabbing your lights, you can always go Shift D to duplicate, make more lights, kind of rotate them around and until you get sort of nice lighting like this. And there you have it, pretty cool. Oh, you can go now to frame one, where you'll see it like this. And if you wanted to, you could go over to your output, go to your output folder and select somewhere on your computer and then under your file format, you can change this to FFmpeg video. Under the encoding, you can change the container to mp4peg, which is an mp4. And then you can go render and render the animation out to your desktop or whichever destination you selected. But that's how easy it is to do these sort of simulations in Blender. I'll see you guys next time and thank you for watching.